Hey guys, after reevaluating it, the switch games you saw in the background of the video where I showed you these, um, technically you've already seen on the channel, I did go through a phase um, the last two months or so where I was reevaluating what I wanted to keep for my collection. And a lot of these ended up on the cutting block. Uh, and I had them listed on eBay for a while. But being the wishy-washy person I am, I did end up taking the listings down and now I'm adding them back into my collection. So rather than show you all those games individually, I think it'd be more interesting to show what my Switch collection looks like right now. Uh, I've moved things around and they are currently taking up basically the top two rows there with a few bleeding into the third row. We'll see what it looks like at the end of this video. With all that being said, what's up internet? Welcome to the Collecting with Corey channel. Uh, we are going to go over this pickup that I have been procrastinating about for probably a month now. I feel like I say that every pickup video, but that's because it's what I do. Um, originally, this was just a stack of Switch games that I wanted to show you guys, which I realize now I don't think I even organized into the order I wanted to show it, but we'll show it as is, whatever. Um, and a few other items that I wanted to show you guys that I have picked up lately in my travels. Um, this one, probably one of the most recent pickups, uh, not 100% worth it. This is Batman the Animated Series. This is the Blu-ray, uh, the brand new sealed. I'm going to be opening it soon. Uh, $30 at Goodwill. It's actually not that much more expensive online. So I didn't get that great of a deal, but, uh, I am recording a podcast about an episode on here and that's probably going to be the easiest way for me to watch it legally at least. Um, a few other random items. This is actually pretty cool. Uh, this is a leather... I forgot what this is called. It's been so long since I picked it up. Uh, Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. Um, in these little, like, pocket-sized, almost, leather-bound books. Uh, I would be interested to know if these have the entire books on them, because they just seem so small, it feels like they must have cut something out. But, if not really cool to have. Um, I recently decided that I wanted to keep Banjo-Kazooie, so I had this for sale on eBay, decided to add it to the collection because it is one of my favorite N64 games. Uh, for N64, generally, I don't add stuff to the collection unless it's complete, so I'm on the lookout for the uh, box and manual. This, I feel like everything this year is coming to a head with all the rumors of Final Fantasy Tactics getting some sort of remake, remaster. Honestly, the game looks beautiful. You could probably just put it on the Switch and I'd be happy, to be honest with you. Um, but here I have the <laughs> Final Fantasy Tactics original soundtrack, which uh, only released in Japan, so it's, you know, the Japanese version, but same thing. Um... I also recently pre-ordered probably the most expensive toys I ever have in relation to this game. So, true fan right there. <sighs> Stressing about that one. Um, a few other items. I came across this at Thrift. This is uh, Puerto Rico, the board game from Rio Grande Games. I hear many people in the board game circles that I travel in and listen to podcasts about talk about how this is a pretty staple game um and I found it for four bucks at the thrift so I'm gonna hold on to it brand new this was going to be something I was gonna sell uh snafu the maze game that runs you ragged it's actually pretty fun to play and it turns out I'm missing like a marble or a ball bearing so I decided to keep it uh, I'll probably get rid of it eventually, just because of a, you know, the spacious, the split, the, the space. I can't say these words. Space, 
issue when it came to Leave all this in. Leave all this in, future self. I need the shame. You know what I'm trying to say. A uh, few toys. <laughs> this one, definitely uh, the coolest. How did I get this? I've come across two Astro Mega Ships slash Astro Megazords from Power Rangers in space recently. I don't remember where I got this from. This might have been at a thrift store. I know I found two of them. One of them was missing the head. This one is mostly complete. It's just missing the sword from what I remember and maybe a gun. Um, very cool figure. I would transform them, but I don't remember how right now. Uh, and just something I'm holding on to until I find a cooler uh, toy from Power Rangers Beast Morphers. It's one of the newer seasons, and the newer the season, I feel, the cheaper the Megazords get. So, that's what they have for that. Um, something I almost went crazy splurging on. Weird sentence to say. Uh, but the Power Rangers Lightning Collection started coming out with some of the crossover event that they had with the Turtles. Um, this was the only two-pack in which you actually got two Turtles. Two Turtle Rangers. Uh, the other two-packs was like, here's Raphael and a Foot Soldier, which I was just like, eh. Or here's literally just a pink ranger with an april o'neill head uh and michelangelo so i decided to get these ones leonardo and donatello as the blue and black ranger in this case uh really cool i would like to get the other ones eventually but i'll probably try and pick them up loose and the last non-video game thing even though it is video game related thing that i have to show you is the spider-man art of the game art book that I picked up. Uh, this was going to be for resale, but I actually really enjoyed watching Let's Plays on this game. Actually, actually, like, this is probably the closest game to making me want to pick up a PS4 slash PS5, I guess. Uh, still probably not going to do that, though. And now on to the video games few non-Switch titles to show you uh, at a game store for, I think, $15. I picked up Injustice on the Vita. It's just so random and rare at this point to find Vita games that I almost feel obligated to pick them up when I see them. Blinks the Time Sweeper. Picked this up from Sam at the flea market for a cheap price that I don't remember, but it's complete. Um around the same time that I decided to keep that Banjo-Kazooie game just because mascot platformers are usually kind of fun. Decided to hold on to that one. Um, Battalion Wars 2. I, it looks like something I would enjoy playing. Maybe. On the Wii? Eh. So this I was able to pick up from a thrift store. Okage or Okage the Shadow King. I didn't realize this was an RPG. I started playing it a little bit to test it out when I was going to sell it. And it's just so quirky and weird. And apparently eventually it has RPG elements that I decided to keep it. Because I don't think this is ever going to see any sort of re-release. Because this is just the weirdest thing. And the last non-Switch pickup. Fire Pro Wrestling Returns on the PS2. All right. Now, a lot of this is a pretty clear example of why I have a problem. If it's cheap, or if there's perceived scarcity, and I get hit with a little bit of FOMO, fear of missing out, I'll probably pick it up. So let's get into these. Um, I probably saw this in a Metal Jesus video. Okinawa Rush came with a pen, which I fucking have no clue what to do with. But uh, it looks like a really fun side-scrolling beat-em-up kind of game. So 
I picked it up. It's from Pixel Heart over in some PAL territory. Uh, you would have seen this if you watched the short I did on GameStop. Just dial ready. I honestly thought I was just going to be using a $5 coupon and getting this for $15. Instead, I paid $20 for it. So maybe it's fun. It's GameStop new, of course. So, yeah, didn't have to remove any plastic on that. Um, don't know where this came from, but decided to hold on to it. Uh, Namco Arcade Pack. Actually, I think I do know where this came from. This was another one of the games that I had listed on eBay. And I do the quotation marks because apparently when you have as many listings on eBay as I do, it's easy for a listing to just fall off of eBay for some reason. And it's no longer there despite not selling. And you think it's listed, but it's not. So when I was looking through the Switch games I had listed... This was in there, and I was just like, huh. I haven't had any offers on it. I haven't sent out any offers. Uh, let me check the listing, and it's not even listed anymore. I know it was at some point. But that's the way eBay go. Uh, Destroy All Humans. I'm pretty sure this was like $15 to $20 at GameStop at some point. Of course, yet another GameStop brand new copy. Like you do. G Darius HD. This was on Amazon for like $14 shipped for the longest time. Uh, it was on there so long that I had to, I had the time to go through the phase of like, I'm not going to buy any more Switch games for myself to caving. And then, well, here we are. Uh, Monster Crown. I told myself that I really wanted to play this. It looks like a Pokemon ripoff that would be a lot of fun, but here it is still sealed. This was also, I believe, on Amazon, and it was on sale of some sort, maybe for like 25 bucks. This must be another GameStop game that was on sale recently. They did a lot of sales at the beginning of January, I believe, or maybe it was the end of December. Uh, Alex Kidd in Miracle World DX. I've heard that this game is kind of mediocre, but it was cheap. Dragon Quest Builders 2. I believe GameStop had this for like $18 on clearance at some point, so I finally decided to pull the trigger on that. Another GameStop pickup, Hotline, Mi <laughs> Hotline Miami Collection. Oh, I almost bought this again today. I'm glad I didn't, because my apps aren't updated in the least. Uh, new Super Lucky's Tale. Not sure where I got this from. I almost bought it again. Um, Stubbs the Zombie. I was finally able to get rid of my Xbox version, because I have it on the Switch. Everything's going to be on the Switch eventually, as it seems. Kingdoms of Amalur Re-Reckoning, another GameStop pickup, another game that I wanted to try out in the Xbox 360. Blah. Your boy can't talk today, but we're leaving it all in, future self. Uh, tried to play that back in the 360 era, but wouldn't put down Skyrim for it. So uh, Here is a game that I had a little bit of FOMO on, on sale on Amazon for 40 bucks. Ease... Nine Monstrum Knox. I have not played an Ease game, but I have as many of them as I can afford. So there's that. Two games that I feel like I've been waiting for forever from Strictly Limited. Of course, they come with their postcards, which I have no idea what the hell I'm supposed to do with, but I feel like as a collector, I need to hold on to it. Um, Griffin Knight Epic, Definitive Edition, and Clockwork Aquario. These were ordered at a time when I was ordering almost everything that I could from Strictly Limited and the like. Oh, next up, the second to last game here is Blue Reflection Second Light. So the story with this is, I had never heard of this series. Um... There's another JRPG channel I watch. I don't remember who they were, actually. So I can't name drop them, unfortunately. But they mentioned how the first game on PS4 was really hard to find, and they had to pay, like, over $100 for it. So 
FOMO got triggered. I saw that it was readily available in my GameStop. And I had a $5 off coupon. Or actually, no, I ended up cashing in a bunch of points to get this for like $10 or something. When it was still full price. Still brand new sealed at least. So it wasn't their last copy for once. Um, and the last game, something I got off GameStop.com. When they had some games on sale, I assume, from what I remember. I don't remember what came with this. Uh, none of that... None of that triggers any memories, but we have Akiba Strip, Hellbound, and Debriefed. This is some weird, etchy... Uh, Japanese... Shooter, knock clothes off people series for 40 bucks for some sort of Switch special edition. I decided to pick it up. Um, truthfully, at least at this point, because apparently I changed the way I collect every other week, uh, I'm trying to avoid buying Switch special editions because I end up not wanting to open them collector's editions at least i end up not wanting to open them the stuff that's in them i don't really want i'm remembering how fingers work and numbers and counting works uh i don't like that's that they're all random sizes like can i adjust this to so you can see behind me look at that shelf right there it's all random sized Switch Special Editions. So annoying. But. Mini rent over. For now, I'm going to try and avoid getting more Collector's Editions. Oddly enough, one of the reasons I've been putting this video off is because there is a limited run Special Edition that is supposedly, theoretically, coming to be in the mail sometime soon because I see it on other people's channels and in other people's stores but it, I haven't gotten any shipping notification or anything so it is what it is I guess like the video subscribe if you're new let me know in the comments below if you also can't quite figure out how you want to collect because I feel like it changes week to week for me Anyways, I don't remember how to end a video. Keep it real, Internet. I love you guys. And there it is. After all those games are finally put away.